Hi everybody, my name is John Cadger. I'm a USMEF Global Beef Ambassador, and this is The Beef In Brief. Let's go! It's John again with The Beef In Brief. Today we're talking about the cowboy steaks. And this is my steel horse, and this is what we're gonna ride it on. The big cowboy steak, this big, beautiful steak. A steak like this requires a few little tips and tricks to cook properly because it's so big, and it takes a long time, between 25 and 35 minutes to cook. So we're gonna use a couple of great things to do it. We're gonna use one of these probes to make sure, we just stick this probe inside and make sure we get a great temperature. You can pick whatever temperature you want, medium rare, rare, medium, and well done if you want. If you want it well done, cook it well done. It's about your steak, your way. Cook it however you want. Is make sure you take this out of the fridge for about an hour before you cook it. Because you want that internal temperature, the, the inside of the beef, to be about the same temperature as the outside, room temperature. Because if you cook this straight from the fridge and you use that handy probe in there, it'll always tell you a very, very cold temperature. So you'll have very, very cooked on the outside and then super, super rare on the inside. And we don't want that. So what we do is we call that tempering. We bring the steak up to temperature and make sure it's about room temperature and it'll cook much more evenly. With a piece of meat like this, you have our bone right here, which is always amazing, amazing flavor. But some people, and again, when you cook that, It'll be more well done on the outside, so when you cook this piece of meat, you'll cook it more here, and it'll always be a little bit rarer on the inside near the bone. So we little do a little trick here, is that we just carve this right like that. So we just open that up, give it a little space to breathe, and then we'll see it'll cook much more evenly and be way easier to cook and you'll have a much more even cooking. Now, if you wanted to have even more in the middle, when we're about done cooking it, about 20, 25 minutes in, we'll take that bone off and we can throw that bone on the grill. Whatever you want to do, you do it your way. I'm going to show you my favorite way and the things that I've learned over 30 years of cooking. Great steak all over the world. You only need a couple of things to make this steak great because we spent a lot of energy uh, in the United States with the farmers and the ranchers building up all this beautiful fat. And with this fat, you get flavor. So we don't wanna, we don't wanna lose that flavor. So all we use is a very, very clean oil. I don't tend to use olive oil unless I'm cooking Italian food. For beef, I like the nice clean oil, a vegetable or a canola oil. And lots and lots of salt. Because most of this salt will actually come off on the grill. And just rub that in there and make sure that it's covered in salt real, real nice there. Now we're gonna go over to our grill. Now I've been cooking a few steaks today because I love cooking steaks. So we give it a little bit of a clean, make sure that our surface is clean before we get there. And we just take a little bit of a, a piece of paper or a paper towel with the same oil that we use there. And we just give that grill just a little bit of a clean and make sure that we're, we're, we're starting from a really, really clean surface. Now, it doesn't matter if you're cooking it in a pan at home or on a, on a grill pan like this, the techniques that I use and the techniques that work really, really well for cooking steak are always the same. Turn and turn, build those juices and get some really, really amazing flavor. So we're gonna go on that grill and you're gonna see, you hear all that great, great sizzle, sizzle. What we're trying to do here is build up color and build up crust. We want to build up what's called the Maillard reaction. And that's the caramelization of all those sugars that that animal has been eating for the last couple of years. Really, really amazing flavor. And that's all that beautiful browning that you see on the inside. So I'm a turner. That's what I do. I'm a flipper. I like to move my steak around. So because I want to build up all that flavor all the way around, I don't cook for, for lines. I cook for flavor. That's the most important thing for me. Flavor, flavor, flavor. The other thing you have to worry about too, or think about, is that as soon as you turn, if I turn that steak over in the same place, that grill's gonna be much colder because I've already put a cooler piece of meat on that grill. So I like to move my steak around the grill and make sure that I'm using all the parts of my grill to make sure that I'm getting all that heat that's available for me in that grill. And like I said, I'm gonna keep opening and closing it. I'm watching it. I'm sitting around with my friends, I'm enjoying it. When I'm thinking about this beef, I'm thinking about how great a life it has. And that's what's really amazing about the US beef system is that the farmer rancher, the better the beef that he makes, or she makes, 
the better the price they get for that cattle. So it's almost a perfect system. The happier, the healthier, the more sustainable, the more consistent beef that you get, the better the price that the farmer gets. And in this day and age, we want to make sure that we take care of those farmers so they continue to make great food for us so we can enjoy it with our friends and family. So you see, I'm just going to be moving my steak around a few more times. A steak like this, this fat steak here will take about 30, maybe 45 minutes, depending on how you want it. Again, it's always up to you. You cook steak how you like it. On a big, beautiful cowboy like this, you see this, this beautiful rib cap? That's my favorite part of the meat. So, but because it's on the very outside, that'll be a little bit more cooked. So I'll take that off first and I'll say, oh my friend, you take the middle part, which is beautiful and red. I'll take the outside that's a little bit more cooked. It's a little trick I learned way back in the day because that rib cap has so much flavor and so much tenderness, it really is the best part of meat for me. That's my go-to every single time. I'm still giving my friend a great piece of meat, but I save the good parts for me. You can even put that beef right like that because we want that color all the way around. Just leave it like that for a few minutes. And when we do that, when we turn, when we cook from all sides, what we do is we drive those juices right into the middle of the meat. And that's what we want. We want them in the middle. We don't want them on the outside because the, the juices are gone. Drive those juices in the middle. And then when we take that steak off, let it relax for a few minutes. Let it sit down for a few minutes. It'll really, all those juices will come back throughout the meat. It'll make for a great, great steak. All right, everybody. We've got our cowboy steak cooked on our steel horse. Did its job. Gave us all that beautiful color. Look at that, all that GBD golden brown delicious. Oh baby, this is gonna be good.